Hello and welcome to another Witness Special. I'm Raggy Omar. Land and language are the cornerstones of national identity and the source of most conflicts in history, not least the ongoing struggle for identity and nationhood between Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Today's Witness Special looks at the roots of this conflict, tracing the birth of Zionism in the late 19th century through to the expulsion of indigenous Arabs from the land in 1948. But this film is unusual in that it is not only people who are the witnesses here. Filmmaker Maris Gagour carefully builds the story around the original source documents, newspapers and film archive of the time, weaving them in and out of the testimonies of eyewitnesses and historians. She uses the historian's forensic skills together with documentary storytelling and builds a powerful and detailed picture of this desperate struggle for land and identity and nationhood. A riveting film, The Land Speaks Arabic. We should go east, into Transjordan. That would be a test for our movement. Nonsense. Isn't there enough land in Judea and Galilee? The land in Judea and Galilee is occupied by the Arabs. Well, we'll take it from them. We'll harass them until they get out. Let them go to Transjordan. As soon as we have a big settlement here, we'll seize the land. We'll become strong. We'll expel them from there too. Let them go back to the Arab countries. I mean, most of my life in Galilee and Jerusalem, I never came across uh, documents on transfer. The issue was suppressed. It was really suppressed within Israeli society. There was a conspiracy of complete silence around it. I went straight into archives in Jerusalem and I was quite shocked to discover mountains of documents, minutes, meetings, committees, uh, uh, mainly about the 30s, but even before the 30s. Uh, gradually, I started to create a picture of what the idea of transferring Zionism was. And I came to the conclusion, really, it was, it was from the beginning of the Zionist project. Already in the late 19th century, the Zionist leaders, the top leaders, Herzl talks about transfer. But he talks about it in a kind of vision, in a kind of dream, in a kind of gradually you have Jewish settlements increasing in Palestine, Gradually, the Palestinians will be pushed out. Excellence, je dois à la bienveillance de M. Zadok Khan le plaisir d'avoir lu la lettre que vous lui avez adressée. L'idée sioniste dont je suis l'humble serviteur n'a aucune tendance hostile au gouvernement ottoman, mais bien au contraire. En faisant immigrer une quantité de juifs apportant leur intelligence, leur esprit financier et leurs moyens d'entreprise au pays, Il ne peut faire de doute que le bien-être du pays tout entier en serait l'heureuse conséquence. Vous dites à M. Zadok Khan que les Juifs feraient mieux de se tourner d'un autre côté. J'ai fait soumettre à Sa Majesté le Sultan des propositions générales. S'il n'acceptera pas, nous chercherons et croyez-moi, nous trouverons ailleurs ce qu'il nous faut. The critical issue, one of the critical issues, is the land. Okay, in order to have a Jewish state in Palestine, you take all these European Jews, middle class Jews from the cities of Europe, and you want to put them on the land. You want to create Jewish settlements, Jewish kibbutzim, Jewish agricultural things. So the issue of the land is critical for them. The land is held by the villages. The villages are large. The land was cultivated. Le Réveil, Beirut, 1922. Monsieur Ward Price du Daily Mail écrit. La Palestine est un pays agricole et les Juifs ne sont pas des agriculteurs. Les immigrés juifs qui viennent de Pologne ou d'Allemagne où ils sont nés et où ils ont grandi dans les grandes villes ne peuvent pas devenir des agriculteurs. First importance to the national welfare is the production of food. And in agricultural schools, Jews have acquired stable them to refute the widely held belief that they do not make good farmers. Anna Palestine al وأهلي فلسطينيين وأبوي فلسطيني وجدي فلسطيني ومن عشرة آلاف سنة أنا فلسطيني من بيت جبلين أبوي وجدي كانوا عايشين بعبارة عن فلاحين وزارعين وكانوا يزرعوا فيها قمح وشعير وذرة وكرسان وعدس وكنا نزرع فيها خضار وكان في عندنا كمان حلال غنم في عندنا أغنام 
يعني كبار الاب ويجي الواد يسال نفس الصنعه ونفس المهنيه. احنا قريه بس قريه كبيره لكن احنا عايشين مش من الارض نزرع احنا نزرع بندوره فكوس كسا بصل كل شيء من القريه يعني من الارض ازرع كمح نطحن وما عايشين من هالارض اجوا هاليهود احنا كنا مزارعين بس حركتنا زراعيه يزرعوا يزرعوا بصل براسيا بتنجان كوسيا The second issue is the issue of demography. Palestine was a populated country. The land is occupied by the Palestinians. كان في زكريا خمس حمائل والحمائل أول ما تقول الأول حمولة الفدارجة العيسة الشمارخة شايف أبو لبن العدوي البلد كانت خمس حمائل خمس حارات. يعني تقريبا ألف شخص. Palestine proper has already its inhabitants. The Pashalik of Jerusalem is already twice as thickly populated as the United States, having 52 souls to the square mile, and not 25% of them Jews. They see people there as a problem. Well, they had to talk about it. You can't, uh, uh, you can't talk about transfer unless there is someone to transfer. But they don't, they don't see people with the same rights, the same values, uh, the same connection to the land. Of course, they saw the country inhabited, but they don't see uh, the people are integral part of that country, have rights to it, have future in it. The Zionists didn't accept the idea that Palestinians are a people, a nation. The present British Zionist scheme is as unworkable economically as it is politically. Every square inch of soil has to be purchased. I search history in vain for a colonization on such a basis. The basis of our whole existence is our right to build up our national home in Eretz Israel. This is a right which did not have to wait for the Balfour Declaration. It is the right which originated in the promise of God to Abraham. The Zionists were secular Jews. The Zionists who started Zionism were not religious Jews. Religious Zionism it was a tiny group of people. They were actually, the Zionists who started the Zionist movement were atheists, many of them atheists. They were actually against their Jewish religion. Most rabbis in Europe, in Germany, at the end of the 19th century, were against Zionism. Most rabbis were against Zionism. They saw Zionism was against the very idea of uh, diaspora and Jews waiting for the Messiah. So the diaspora is something normal. The Zionists were secular, nationalist, if you like, European nationalist, cent central European nationalist, a kind of tribal nationalism, blood and race and land all mixed together. And that kind of nationalism can only be exclusive, ethnic, if you like. Most Jews in Europe were non-Zionist. Most Jews in Palestine were European Jews. One of them was the Orthodox Jews, who were not Zionists. And the second one were the Jewish settlers from Eastern Europe. The Jewish settlers were really European settlers, were not Arab Jews. Arab Jews were not Zionists. Palestinian Jews, if you like, the Arab Jews, they tried to be part of the Arab community as a whole. في عندي اصحاب يهود وفي عندي صحبات يهود في تعرفت على واحدة بنت اسمها شولامت شولامت هذه اسمها يهود يعني يهودية هي البنت. On vivait comme si uh, c'était la même famille, c'est-à-dire il n'y avait pas de différence entre musulmans, chrétiens et juifs avant. Il n'y avait pas de différence. C'est plus tard quand ils ont accepté l'immigration et tout ça. Ce n'est pas les juifs qui vivaient en Palestine, c'était les juifs qui sont venus d'ailleurs. Les Yahoudis, les Mutbaldiens, je ne veux pas dire ça. Mais les Mutbaldiens, les Mutbaldiens, les Mutbaldiens, les Mutbaldiens, les Mutbaldiens, يقولوا من يجرانا انتم مبيعين الله وكيل هيك اليهود يهود يعني اولاد عرب هن انتم مبيعين 
بس انتو خليكوا قاعدين سوا سوا بنضل احنا وياكو لا ابنك بموت ولا ابني بموت Bible is used by the Zionist movement in order to justify another colonial enterprise. Throughout all the sorrowful centuries since the Hebrews were scattered over the face of the earth, their religious rituals have kept ever before them the memory of Palestine as the land promised them by Moses. Zionism had to sort of reinvent Judaism and had to reinvent roots. Zionism actually used the Bible effectively to try to create a whole mythology, some kind of uh, blood connection between the ancient Israelites and, and, and the modern European Jews. You need to create these myths to legitimize the colonization of Palestine, I think, and to give some sort of international legitimacy to the project. Had Zionists come to Palestine simply as visitors, or had matters remained as before the war, there would be no question of Jew or non-Jew. It is the idea of transforming Palestine into a home for the Jews that Arabs resent and fight against. The fact that a Jew is a Jew has never prejudiced the Arabs against him. Before the war, the Jews enjoyed all the privileges and rights of citizenship. The question is not a religious one, for we see that Christians and Muslims alike, whose religions are not similar, unite in their hatred of Zionists. The time had come for the PLO to seek a new and peaceful solution. Arafat pursuing a path of diplomacy. But what was to turn their agreed withdrawal from Lebanon into one of the most horrific civilian massacres of modern times? Women killed, children killed. We couldn't believe our eyes. Chronicling the turbulent story of the struggle for a Palestinian homeland. PLO, history of a revolution, at this time on Al Jazeera. America, land of the great, where citizens are free. You know, we're Americans, we like a lot of stuff. And dreams are real. But what happens when cracks appear in the society in which we live? There just seems to be no way out, and we're scared. Avi Lewis and Josh Rushing get under the skin of a superpower as fault lines appear. Fault lines, at this time on Al Jazeera. In the coal country of West Virginia, the battle for the high ground continues. This is what we do here in West Virginia. We harvest energy, and our energy is coal. We're not against coal. We are trying to create green jobs and rebuild this area. People in power contrasts the renewable with the finite. What we have here is one of the biggest clashes between public and private interests. Coal River, at this time on Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, breaking news. This is a police line, and they're pushing back against the crowds. There's a barricade there, so we can't get through. We've been pushed through by the police. We've been told that the Revolutionary Guard has said categorically it will crush any further protests. That must be an extremely intimidating atmosphere. We're hearing loud explosions from the protesters, gunfire as well. Things are getting very tense indeed. The cause of unrest in Palestine, the only cause, arises from the Zionist movement and from our promises and pledges. In the middle of the 19th century, we have 5% Jews in Palestine. It's quite extraordinary. Only 5% are uh, people who looked at the figures. And I think the percentage probably before that was, was even less than that. There are the Jews, whom we are pledged to introduce into Palestine, and who take it for granted that the local population will be cleared out to suit their convenience. 
By the First World War, the Jewish percentage in Palestine is under 10%. I think the figures we have from 1917, 1918, under 10% 10, 10 of the population Jewish. Including the new settlers, the new arrivals, those people like Ben Gurion who came before the First World War. D'où nous vient cette audace de parler du problème arabe Actuellement, et dans un futur proche, il existe seulement en Palestine un problème juif. Problème d'une minorité juive faible. Et si malgré tout nous continuons à parler d'un problème arabe, c'est seulement parce que nous avons dans le pays d'Israël une perspective historique. The position of labor Zionism was gradualism, gradual colonization. A Jewish majority will be created gradually. Keep quiet about it. By a Jewish national home, I mean the creation of such conditions that as the country is developed, we can pour in a considerable number of immigrants and finally establish such a society in Palestine that Palestine shall be as Jewish as England is English, or America, America. So the real change really is happening in the late 20s, early 30s. That's the demographic change. The main case of the Arabs is against the British government's policy in Palestine, a policy which, if continued, will surely have as a result the replacement of the Arabs by the Jews. Only under the colonial power you have a radical change in the evolution of that country. Uh, and, uh, and the equation changes, the situation changes. The Palestinians suddenly are under threat, massive threat. Only then we have the uprising, really, the rebellion.
صرت انشق 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 بعدين ما حسيت حالي اني انعست هيك انعست ما شربت حالي وين صرت ما فقت الا الا ثاني يوم فقت ولا هم قاطعين اجري شايلين اجري يا يما اعطيني البارود مع اللاقا ليش لبلادي بدي انزل على المشناقه اخذوا المده عملوا لي محاكمه عملوا محاكمه حكموني اعدام يا ويلي يا ويلي يا لما الحكيم اعطى على صر طبيب انه لا يتجاوز ال 16 لا يتجاوز ال 16 نزل العاد نزلوا من الاعدام للمؤبد روح لامي ويصلها يخبر بالصحيح اللي جرى من اخذوني من من المستشفى على السجن دغري على سجن عكا عادت بالسجن ست سنين وكل سنه 12 شهر فلما لما اجت الحكومه عاد بدها تفل بدها تسلم فلسطين لليهود اجوا الاهل السياسيين كلياتها طلعوها المهم انا من الجمله قالوا لي يلا When the Zanis leaders adopt transfer in the mid 30s they still adopted in their in their private meetings. They don't come out saying we want to transfer them. In private discussions, in policy discussions, in meetings of the Jewish uh, agency executive, they talk about the only way forward is actually to clear them out. In the 30s, they feel slightly more confident. There's more Jewish demography, more Jewish growth. The Jewish settlements is much bigger. You have more Jewish militias, more Jewish armies. I think transfer comes with that growth in confidence of the Zionist community in Palestine. It also happens with the Palestinian uprising, Palestinian rebellion. 1936, you have the big strikes in Jaffa and the cities. And you have the rebellion in the countryside, which is even much earlier, 1935. When you have a Palestinian rebellion, the British send the commission, the Peel Commission there. The Zionists had to address that commission. So you have the Jewish leaders being interviewed by the Peel Commission, and they put forward the idea of transfer to the commission. In meetings with the commissions, um, uh, Weizmann, Charette, the Jewish agency, they promote this idea of the way to deal with the uprising, the way to deal with the Palestinian, the way to deal with the land issue, the way to deal with the uh, complaints and the grievances and the resentment of the Arabs, actually to move them out. <laughs> British say, look, where well, there's a rebellion, the Palestinians don't want you. They don't want land uh, purchases. They don't want immigration. Zion said, well, look, there's a so-called human way out of the situation. Let's try to transfer, transfer them to Transjordan, Iraq. Let's do it in, in an organized manner. Let's try to build villages for them there. Large villages crowded in population and surrounded by cultivated land, growing olives, grapes, figs, sesame and maize fields. Would we be able to maintain scattered settlements among these existing villages that will always be larger than ours? And is there any possibility of buying their land? And once again I hear that voice inside me called, evacuate this country. كثيرة بلدنا هي في النص هي الجبل وقاطع هوان وقاطع هوان كانت البلاد بترسم لا لا عندي فلان نروح نعمل اصال حدا يقول لنا شو عاملين والله اي أيوة والله حدا يقول شو مساوي ولا الواحد يجوزها يقول له وين رايحه ولا جاي من وين بدروا عند ام خليفه عند ام عمر عند ام حسين عند ام حسن عند They are too many and too much rooted. The only way is to cut and eradicate them from the roots. Without taking action to transfer population, we will not be able to solve our question by land buying.
Kamal Santa Maria here in Doha with a check of the headlines on Al Jazeera. And the U.S. special envoy to the Middle East is in Tel Aviv. He is meeting Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak. A little bit earlier, George Mitchell was in Damascus for talks with Syria's President Bashar al-Assad. It was Mitchell's second meeting with the Syrian leader in just over a month. He called the meeting positive and stressed the importance of dialogue between the two countries. Now the headlines, Pakistani authorities said they've arrested the pro-Taliban cleric Sufi Muhammad. Al Jazeera has been told he was arrested along with his two sons during a raid in Peshawar. Sufi Muhammad helped negotiate a peace deal between the government and the Taliban in Swat Valley. That was back in February, a deal widely seen to strengthen Taliban control in the area. Independent observers have told Al Jazeera they saw several cases of fraud during Saturday's elections in the Kurdish region of northern Iraq. Nearly 80% of eligible voters turned out to choose a new president and parliament for that regional government. The opposition Goran movement is accusing the ruling party of President Masoud Barzani and the coalition partner of manipulating the vote. The outcome won't be known for days with votes going all the way to Baghdad to be counted. For the second day running, the ousted Honduran president Manuel Zelaya has approached the border from Nicaragua. But Zelaya declined yet another attempt to try to enter uh, his country. He announced he would instead set up camp on the Nicaraguan side. High temperatures and strong winds are stoking wildfires in southern Europe. More than 6,000 hectares of forest and grasslands have been destroyed. This is on the French island of Corsica. Fires continue to burn there for a fourth day despite the efforts of around 200 firefighters. Spain also on nationwide maximum wildfire alert. That's been in since Friday. Firefighters there are battling yet another blaze that's broken out. This one's near the town of Extremadura. And these scenes are being repeated in France and in Greece, where scorching temperatures, carelessness and arson have all led to the charring of hundreds of thousands of hectares of land. And finally, South Korea, where five workers were killed when a large steel frame collapsed at a construction site. Nine other workers were injured in the incident near the capital, Seoul, that frame part of a bridge that was being built for a light rail system. Those are your headlines on Al Jazeera. More news again after Witness. By 1939, the British managed to crush the Palestinian rebellion. Crush really mean crush, bombing villages, using uh, aircraft. They arrest many people, they execute many, but the British actually react quite harshly to the Palestinian uprising. The Palestinian society was disarmed in the 30s by the British. The English government had no doubt. They had a lot of violence. واللي عنده برود وفشك يعدموه اعدام اللي عنده أكثر من خوصة للمطبخ يأخذوها منه ويغرموه جردونا أنا حضرت حكم الإنجليز قعدت في الإنجليز حوالي يمكن 16-17 سنة كانوا عاملين رقابة علينا الله أعلم فيها كانت الحكومة الإنجليزية ما تسمحش للعرب الفلسطيني يحط فيه سكينة سكينة ما كانت تسمح له شبريه يحطها في جنبه ما كانوا يستسمح له واليهود كانوا يسلحوا. Palestinians are beheaded. He's got no leadership. That leadership was crushed by the British in 1936-38. So the British played a crucial role in terms of disarming their society, subduing it, crushing it. So the defeat is really the defeat of the Palestinian society militarily uh, in 1948 can be actually traced to 1936-39. And the British actually played a key role, a big role in it. The Zionists, by contrast, they, they had arms industry. The way the Jewish community was created in Palestine was created as a military civilian community. Settlers were also soldiers at night. Settlers had a, uh, had, a, uh, had a fence and a watchtower. The Jewish community in Palestine was trained as a military garrison.
they start in 1937, 38, 39, under Jabotinsky, they start actually planting bombs. The technique of planting bom bombs in our markets, in the cities, was really started by Jabotinsky. Italy is the Hebrew acronym for Ergun Tzveilumi. Lehi, the other splinter group, concentrated on assassination. They assassinated Lord Moyne, they assassinated um, Count Bernadotte in 1948. You know, that was actually, their specialism was assassination. The main target of Eitzel were the Palestinians and urban centers. Eitzel technique was, if you were to target Palestinian urban centers, if you were to terrorize the cities, Actually, the Palestinian society can actually be shaken, thrown off balance. Targeting markets, urban centers. This is where the Palestinian society is based. This is where the leadership of Palestinian society. If you throw the cities off balance, and here I think the idea of terror, the idea of actually terrorizing, you only need to plant a few bombs in, in markets, in these souks. Eitzel developed the idea of actually dressing up as an Arab. All the evidence we have that Eitzel operatives, those people actually who, who came to Arab markets, actually were dressed up as Arabs. Eitzel were gangs in the sense of a hit and run. Targeting was of markets, but Eitzel actually moved on to target uh, British officer clubs, British headquarters, British installations. Le 21 juillet, le haut quartier général des troupes britanniques, l'hôtel King David, est détruit par un attentat. Il y a 76 morts et une vingtaine de disparus. À la fin de l'année, le Goldsmith Club saute à son tour. Ces deux attentats sont signés de l'Irgun, mouvement terroriste clandestin dirigé par Menahem Begin. رئاسة الوزارة المنديت تبع الأرض تبع فلسطين هناك كان مندوب السامي بالكينج ديفيد هوتيل ما سمعت شيء تقريبا بوم حسيت كومبليت داركنس يعني الغبرة وبعدين بعد ما راحت الغبرة شوية حطوا لنا سلالم انجبرنا ننزل على السلم على البستان تبع الهوتيل بعدين عرفنا انه هذا شغل الهجانا جايبين براميد حليب للهوتيل كله كان فيه متفجرات وحطوها بالمطبخ تحت تحت وفجروا بعدين اكتشفنا الاصحاب والاصدقاء والمتعاونين معنا اللي كانوا بموظفين اللي توفوا ماتوا 80 90 واحد طلعت لها صار نفس الشيء لهوتيل سيراميس Mon père était gouverneur militaire à Jéricho. Il a été à Jérusalem gouverneur, il a été à Ramallah gouverneur, à Safar, à Bissam, et puis en dernier lieu à Nablus, le district de la Samarie. Il venait après les Anglais. Il y avait un gouverneur anglais et mon père venait juste après. Samiramis, je me souviens de tout, parce que c'était notre cas. C'est pour ça. C'était votre sœur qui était dedans. Et mes tantes. C'était le plus grand après le King David. De la même famille, c'était la première fois un temps de mort de la même famille. C'est pour ça que ça a fait un grand bruit aussi. Lorenzo qui possédait l'hôtel Semiramis. Mais c'est mon oncle. C'est votre... le frère de ma mère qui avait l'hôtel Semiramis. C'était le 4 janvier à 1 heure du matin, en 48. Ils ont mis une petite bombe d'abord pour ouvrir la porte d'en bas, puis ils ont mis la grande bombe. C'était à 6 heures du matin. Ils ont téléphoné à la Prouse pour nous avertir que l'hôtel Samiramis avait sauté. Deux heures après, ils ont téléphoné que ma soeur était vivante mais qu'elle était blessée au pied. Nous avons tout de suite quitté Naplouse pour Jérusalem. Deux de mes tantes, je crois, étaient asphyxiées parce qu'elles avaient la figure bleue. Elles étaient asphyxiées. Le consul d'Espagne, un journaliste de la famille Taher, qui est mort aussi dans cet hôtel. 
quatre tantes, mon oncle, la femme de mon oncle, le mari de ma tante. Et avec mon cousin de 24 ans. C'est mon père seulement qui a été reconnaître les corps. On est resté une semaine jusqu'à qu'on ait pu découvrir les corps pour les enterrer. Chaque fois, on enlevait un peu d'héroïne et on trouvait un corps. Nous avions 18 membres de notre famille dans cet hôtel. Members of underground organizations blow up the Cairo Haifa Express. During this and other searches, 25 high-ranking officials of the Irgunsvai Liumi and Stern Gang were arrested. In the great synagogue at Tel Aviv, the stolen uniforms of many British regiments and bales of forged bearer bonds of the Palestine government have been discovered, in addition to a portable radio transmitter and quantities of illegal weapons and explosives. Our troops in sternly guarded surroundings are looking for members of the notorious Irgun Sfaliume and the Stern Gang, suspected of blowing up the King David Hotel in Jerusalem. Ben Gurion comes to the conclusion that only a Zionist solution can be imposed on the, on the Palestinians. They're not going to negotiate to give up half of the country or to move voluntarily. Ben Gurion does say that a Jewish state against the wishes of the local population can only be secured by the, by the sword. The real planning militarily, I think, is actually happens after the Second World War, uh, partly based on this idea they have force, enough force. They actually feel much more stronger to fight back, and, and, and they feel the Palestinians are much weaker, and the British are on their way ahead. In 1948, Transnet becomes a military operation. You, know, you put people uh, in, on trucks, you shoot it over their heads, uh, you, you, create, you, you, you carry out massacres. 80, 90% of the people actually were driven out as a result of Jewish attacks, atrocities, terror campaigns, whispering campaigns, and various tactics. The vast majority were driven out by combination methods. At the heart of the expulsion was also Plan Dalit which was implemented in uh, March, April 1948. Plan had clauses which explicitly talks about destruction of villages and towns. So it's really connected to the whole ideological concept of clearing out the land. The Jewish agency spends a lot of money on buying land uh, for about 30, 40 years. But the land held by the Jewish agency by, by the end of the mandate is about three, three and a half percent. Gradually, they realize that the country can only be occupied militarily. When Grion thinks about war, transfer can only be done in a situation of war. give us the land. The concept of ours and not ours are peace concepts. Only, and in war, they lose their whole meaning. story at this time on Al Jazeera. Understanding the customs of today and the repercussions for tomorrow. Exposing the scientific progress. Destroying the social presence. Confronting the value of a democracy that is forced on a people. Questioning the economic growth that creates a conflict of cultures. 101 East, at this time, on Al Jazeera. All the news, all the time. Al Jazeera.net forward slash English.
the Palestinian society in 1948 was on the defensive. It's really fighting for its life. Each village, each town is on the defensive. By contrast, the Jewish community was uh, heavily mobilized. Almost everyone was actually in the army. Men and women were in the army. At the end of 1948, the Jewish community had almost 100,000 soldiers. The Jewish community in Palestine had more soldiers than the Arab countries, even around it. Up to early 1948, the villagers had no weapons at all. Militarily, the balance was really uh, completely against the Palestinians in 1948. Militarily, I think the Palestinian society were the, uh, was at the mercy of the Haganah. <laughs> أول بدأوا من يافا من حيفا من جليد من الرملة لين النهار يضربوا علينا على البلد وين ما تيجي تيجي بضربوا فينا والله إحنا بنذري أنا ومن في الذريات هي الحيط ولا الرصاصة بتقدح من بيننا ضربونا بالبرود وبالكنابل هذه المورتر هما يعني أبعدوا عنا لا ورانا مصطفى حمدان عبد العزيز أبو مهنة محمد عثمان علي علي بن إبراهيم علي هذا أسبوع بكوه الأولاد علي ذكروا رشاد محمد خلاوي يعني اللي شفنا أحد شافه شوف قولونا ليش طلعتوا مصدق بدنا نموت يا بنموت يا بنطلع بكوا هجانا يقولوا لهم لا يعرفوا ولا يصرفوا هجانا يقولوا هيزون الهجانا لعندهم رحمة وشفك صهاينة يا عم صهاينة وأول سكتوا بتجمال لأن ما ظلش قدامهم مثلا مقاومة ظل فضاء فضاء ما فيش قدام أنا ضربوا على بلدنا ظل يضربوا على بلدنا تطلع البلد تطلعت البلد ظل يضربوا تطلعت البلد عندما طلعت البلد طاحوا في البلد أنا كنت في البلد ظليت في البلد للصبح صبح وين أخذوا يمكن عشر خمسة عشر واحد أخذوهم وحشروهم في مغارة أنا طحت في الأرض الواطي ونفيت في الواد واد واد تنفت أكثر من اثنين كيلو وأنا ماشي أنا وطلعت من واحد يعني ونفتنا قال اليهود طخوا علينا كبان استعملوا معنا اليهود القوة يضربونا بالنار بالقنابل بالبرود بالمورتر بالطيارة تيجي وتضرب في بيت جمال وتضرب في الارض بينه وبين بيت جمال، يعني ارهاب إن احنا ارهابيين مش هم الارهابيين. احنا ارهابيين معنا طيارات ومعنا مدافع، الانجليز جردتنا واحنا الحمد لله رب العالمين كنا معقولين ما فيش شيء، وطبعا لما واحد يحمل عليك شبريه ويغشاك وانتم ما فيش معك ولا حد يا بتسلم يا بتشرد. احنا شردنا. سنه 48 بشهر اربعه سقطت صفر كلنا. اجى الزتون صار يفرطوا زتون بالزتون اجوا اليهود هاجموا البلد والقرية كلها المنطقة كلها هاجموها مش بس بلدنا هذا صفت كله كان اللي بعد هاي أول هاجموها هاي أول ما صارت اليهود ما فاتت عليه هاجموها وعلية المعركة يا خوي كنا يومين بدي عندي يوم والله يوم ليلة واحدة فاتوا على اليهود على البلد ودمروا الأخضر باليابس ايه سؤال لما فاتوا على البلد كانوا اهل البلد بعض الموجودين ولا في ناس نعم طلعت؟ نعم نعم بالبلد طيب شو عملوا للناس الموجودين بالبلد؟ شو عملوا للناس؟ مم. كيف يعني شو عملوا للناس؟ بتقول فاتوا على البلد فاتوا على البلد اليهود احتلوها احتلوها يعني وقت اللي احتلوها فاتوا على اهل البلد صاروا يضربوا الشباب اللي بدهم اياه حطوها قدام ويرشوها هذا اللي صار مم. انا منهم يعني مش بكذب انا منهم وقت الفاتوها اليهود فتحوا لهم الطريق ويطلعوا، بس من اليهود اللي يطلعوا بس من اليهود ردوا. اللي ردونا رجعنا على البلد. اجوا اليهود، اطلع برا اطلع برا طلعونا برا. انت 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 نقوني من بين النساء واخذونا على محل ثاني على البيت الثاني هيك. واخذونا نحن تحت توتي في توتي هناك وباب البيت. تعهوا تعهوا فتشوا هنا خياف هنا خياف للاخر. شي 22 شهر. وقفونا باب الباب وهن وقفوا ورانا هيك 
في ابن اختي قال رد علينا قال لي الله قال لي دير ميزك يا خمريم يا كلاب يا كذا كذا صار يصير هو ابو فوزي هوسونا ورشونا بالرشة رشونا يا خالي وقت رشونا البث هالشباب كلياتها انا وين انا وين ما صار لي غير رصاصتين هذول ايوه وقت الوعد حركت تيجي وانا مرت ما هيك بين الاوتيل قال له ايش له ايش له؟ له في عنده روح يعني اعطيه ظليت مثل تحت القتلاء من الصبح تغابت الشمس على ما اقول الله وكيل وقت غابت الشمس شفت يا ناس بالدبات تحت القتلاء انا هون فتت على البيت لجوا ايوه فتت على البيت دورت على مي تشرب ما لقيتش طلعت على المصطبي ما بتعرف كيف كان يعمل مصطبي طلعت لفوق دور في في زيتون في تين يابس سحبت الحاف من الفراش ورحت لجوا حطيته على عيوني من والله عم بذبح بحواسه من فوق وما خفت حياه القران وفاتحه شباك واطي وعامله هيك وهالاولاد قدامي ومبلشين يطلع حمط بلد الشيخ وان فاتوا قسم حال الفرقتين فرقه نزلت على بلد الشيخ وفرقه فاتت عني على حواسه بأول حواسة من فوق يعني على سوى البخت تبعت اليهود صاروا صاروا يقتلوا بالناس هل نايمين وما عندناش خبر يا حرام شو ما عن خبر والله وأنا فاتحة هالشباك والله وأنا مرتكية هيك ولادي بنت وولد نايمين قدامي وعاملين ولا أجت أمي تركض الله يرحم الأموات بتقول لي يا مشحرة أنت هون قلت لها بتقول لي يما حس صياح كنا اليهود فاتت علينا قلت لها لا عزا كيف اليهود بدها تفوت طيب وهذول العالم اللي واقفين حراس وما حراس في كان يعني كان في ولا بتقول لي مبالا بصيحوا حس صياح والله شوي ولا هن شعلوا سياره صار يقولوا لبعضهم قديمه ايه ولكم في بيقولوا قديمه يهود ولا اولاد عرب اللي اولاد العرب بيقولوا قديمه يهود وهالصراخ قام وصلوا لحدنا والله لحدنا احنا ووقفوا طلع النار ما حدا استرجع يطلع شوي طلع حماد وعلى وبشير اطلع ولا لا يا حرام هاي واحد بقول من المجدره هي هاي حرام الشوم حبله والله باعدين هالبنت طالعه منها وفي كمان يعني بطلع اربع خمسه ولا عشره هذول كلهم هيك بجوره مسكين مستعظين عليهم كني حرام كي متخبيين الله يا حرام بلشوا فيهم لا الصبح برد طلعوا والله وحدي الله بكير انه بتصوينتنا كيف انه تصويني احنا هيك ما يعني مساوي هي وبنتها بقول بالتصوين عنا ميتي واحنا مش شايفينها عنا بحكرتنا احنا هي وبنتها طلعت هالعالم يتفرجوا من حيفا قالوا راحت حواسه ما ولش حدا فيها الله لقونا بهالشوارع نسوان اولاد صاروا يحتلوا بهالبلاد، بلد ورا بلد، بلد ورا بلد. كانت صيف الدنيا. كان العنب حصرهم. المناضلة تبعتنا وهالركض اللي كنا نركض اخيرا ان اليهود تاخذ البلاد ونصفي احنا لاجئين بتوزع لي بيجي واللي واللي بكيدني اكثر انه يجي واحد من اوروبا ياخذها مني يجي واحد من اوروبا بس الاستعمار هيك بده اه أنا يعني مكبوت جسمي لأني بطلع بيجي ما وصلهاش آخر شيء وقت ما ذكرت لي عن القدس 
نمسك بحبه رجع لوتس هذه أسرت فيه أسرت فيه ذكريات أهل as well as beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. In the orchestra, there's, there's black people, white people, count people, Chinese, everything is just mixed. And I just love it, you know. But we don't all see things in the same way. Maybe your rejection is coming from you don't want to be poor, like this. It has to do with love, and this has nothing to do with love, so it cannot be true. View the world differently. Witness, at this time, on Al Jazeera. Been a shift in the balance of power. Users, readers, whatever you want to call them, have the power to distribute, they have the power to create it. In today's intensely viral media, the message can easily become distorted. I am here, this is what I see. At some level, one accepts the truthfulness of the message. So, how can you tell fact from fiction? The crisis in journalism is even more dire than I would have imagined. A program to help guide you through. It looks like that's what's coming. The Listening Post, at this time on Al Jazeera. A dazzling light blurring the line between reality and fantasy. It is there. It's not like it doesn't exist. Discover how filmmakers reflect our world. We are not going to show balance. We're going to take sides, and our sides are the oppressed. Showcasing the finest films from around the globe. Talk about real. It basically works.